Hey everybody. Um, just whoa. Got to deal with that light there. It's a stream time. Uh, let me know. Make sure that you can hear me. Um, that the sound is all right. This beard actually legit is getting Castro. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, if you don't mind while you arrive, it would be awesome if you could hit the like button. Would much appreciate that. Um, please do that. Hey, welcome, welcome. Um, as always, guys, when we do these, really helps if you hit us with the super chats. I'll try to get to some Q&As as well. This is going to be kind of more loose. Um, but the super chats are really big because YouTube is just increasingly not friendly, not where it's at for independent creators. So these uh, the super chats really help. Uh, so please do that. Um, also, uh, as I always ask, if you're a patron, let people know how awesome it is to be a patron in the comments and then go and become a patron at patreon.com slash TMBS and get the whole rad awesome experience. You can also buy, uh, buy um, Against the Web Cosmopolitan Answer to the New Right, buy it at Red Emma's Awesome Worker Cooperative in Baltimore. Great place to buy the book. And people are really liking that book, which is a huge honor because uh, I have big anxiety about writing and getting that done was not always easy. Um, and uh, it's really gratifying to see people digging it. So if you haven't yet, go snag yourself a copy. So guys, uh, there were some really great results last night. Jamal Bowman took out Elliot Angle. That is an awesome, very, very positive result. That is a vote for Medicare for All. That is a vote for serious green investment and green jobs. That's also somebody who articulated some really amazing criticisms about the military industrial complex. Elliot Engel, a bag man for you know, the most extremist uh, apartheid forces in the Middle East, someone who supported coup in Venezuela, uh, very, very, very right-wing chair of House Foreign Relations. I also found it incredibly moving, Bowman's uh, discussion of racism uh, and his uh, life in this country, and also the way he talked about the kind of full spectrum, political, economic, psychological, and spiritual trauma of poverty. And I could tell you as somebody who absolutely knows the experience of sometimes not having a, a roof that's steady, of not having meals um, at certain points in life, not in anywhere near compared to most, um, those things leave real marks and they're totally preventable by policy. And I love that Bowman really, really made that point clearly. So massive change there. AOC, uh, great win for her. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, basically a Republican CNBC anchor masquerading as a, as a Democrat married to a hedge funder and with a pure oligarch agenda and all of these you know, morons across the spectrum saying AOC was a fluke. No, it's not. She's locked into that seat. That's an awesome win. Uh, Mondaire Jones, great win as well. Uh, I believe he's the first openly gay black man in Congress uh, and is someone who had a really clear, powerful, strong left agenda. Uh, people like Jabari Bridgeport, who I supported back when he ran for city council. It's amazing that he's gonna join Julia Salazar, of course, also a former uh, TMBN, TMBS host uh, in New York State Legislature. Uh, these are great, and those local and city races are very important. Charlie Brooker, man, Charlie Booker going to the wire. If he is the nominee, Charlie Booker taking on Mitch McConnell is gonna be the quintessential good versus evil race of the whole cycle. Let's go and let's also be very attentive to the voter suppression that took place during uh, that campaign. Um, oh, thank you, Amanda, much appreciated. Please everybody follow Amanda's lead. Hit us with the super chats. It's very important. And of course, if you're new, please hit subscribe and hit the bell so you get all the content. You should definitely watch all of last night's excellent, excellent TMBS and watch all TMBS episodes and become a patron and get every single one. Um, looking at Andrew Romanoff, that's an important one that he beat Hickenlooper. Thank you, Elizabeth Warren. Uh, 
for the very expected but bad endorsement there. Uh, Jesse uh, Sarkane taking on Chris Coons in Delaware. Jess Perlman uh, taking on um, uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. I love it. Um, there is a lot. Thank you, Jason. I'm honored by that. So, um, you know, and then actually there was one race that was, a, that I have to say, I mean, there's great candidates that have been on this show, like uh, Isaiah James, who has a great future, Lauren Ashcroft, who has a great future. Um, also, please, guys, uh, you know, let's let's keep up the pressure and anything we can do. If you have a few dollars, I would throw them to Shahid Batar, amazing candidate running against Nancy Pelosi. And of course, we need to defeat her. Um, not as super as Amanda. We're getting closer to electing, you know, but I, we appreciate all super chats. We're getting closer to electing enough people to enact sustainable agriculture policies, Green New Deal, solidarity, and, ha and Black Lives Matter. That's awesome. Against the Web was really fun. 10 of 10. Thank you so much. I'm not on Patreon, but I watch so much of your content. I'd like to give you something. Keep it up. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. Yes. Shahid Buttar. Let's really, really look out for that one. Um, Amanda from NJ. Thank you. Um, and, uh, but, uh, one race actually that, so, and another one that was really disappointing was that, uh, Lopez, uh, did not, uh, take over Jose Serrano seats. Uh, Richie Torres is absolutely not a progressive, like, uh, or let alone a democratic socialist like Semolino Lopez. She does great work as a housing advocate. She was a very, very good candidate. I was really disappointed to see that result. Obviously the worst case in that district was prevented. Uh, but it could have been better, compounded by the fact that the retiring congressman, Jose Serrano, was a great congressman. People should look up Jose Serrano. Jose Serrano was a fierce advocate for the poor. He did a huge amount for his district in the Bronx. Uh, really, 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 really a serious voice on economic equality and poverty at a time, of course, where that was completely pushed off in the national agenda did huge work on human rights and advocacy with regards to Puerto Rico, not part of you know the machine as much. And then also uh, had solidarity with Hugo Chavez in Venezuela. In fact, invited Chavez to visit his district when Chavez was in town at the United Nations and uh, signed letters in support of democracy in Brazil. Uh, and of course, against the political imprisonment of Lula da Silva. So Jose Serrano was a really good congressperson. And I don't think Richie Torres from what I've seen in his record in the city council, I do not think that he is gonna keep up uh, those same standards, unfortunately. But of course, people are on the streets, people are advocating, there's always potential. He passed a very watered down so-called police reform bill uh, in the New York uh, city council. And obviously we know that there is just so infinitely more to do on that issue. And that's what people are so bravely out on the streets talking about. But look, there's good things to feel. Uh, there's really some positive things that happened yesterday. Look, let's be real. Of course, this is nothing compared to electing Bernie Sanders president. That was without a doubt, a uniquely important thing. Um, by any, you know, we, we, we can't allow ever fantasy thinking. But we also had some real wins and some great candidates move forward. And I think some other ones like Isaiah James, and Lauren Ashcroft, who are excellent and want to see run for other offices. That Gouda coming through with the madness. One love left his best. Love back. What is your main issue with the discourse on privilege? Uh, discourse, uh, privilege discourse, and there's an amazing piece in the bellows that everybody should read. It's a fantastic critique of the virg virgility uh, book. Um, what's the verdict on Isaiah James? Well, he lost, but I like him a lot. Struggling, oh, Aisha, well, first of all, thank you so much, but do not give anything if you're struggling financially and, you know, no, no pressure whatsoever. Privileged discourse takes uh, problems in the material, political, and economic realms and turns them into questions of personal virtue, which in general I find to be, I mean, look, first of all, it's just not my politics. I have Marxist-oriented politics. I also think the obsession with the personal and the policing of the personal actually has extremely disturbing social uh, trends to it and, and societal effects. And it is always this migratory path, whereas this piece in the bellows says, you know, yes, I really would love if I'm running a corporation to all of a sudden have an, an, a, a question about sort of psychology and attitude and not 
actual questions of, de of distribution and power. Now, again, nothing is entirely either or. Obviously, things like anti-bias trainings in certain contexts are very important, and diversity overall is a virtue, obviously. But those discourses take political and material questions and turn them into psychological and individualistic policing, which in general, across the board, uh, we are already way, way, way unhealthily and sickly too far down that path. So uh, I'll tweet out again. Uh, it was a great piece in the bellows, actually by uh, a viewer and a patron of TMBS who wrote this fantastic piece. The bellows in general and damage are both very interesting websites that I'd recommend people read um, in general. Those both have very, very good resources. Um, so look, there's some positivity from last night. There's things moving forward. Um, and I hope that we can keep pushing them, you know, in the right direction. I thought last night, William Shockey explaining post-apartheid uh, policing and how the remnants of the brutality, the violence, the racism, and the class-based structures of those systems persist without structural changes in the economy. One of the paradoxes, William Shockey was great, and uh, folks, I'm, I'm, I will try to do this less, but please, if you're in here and you haven't yet, please do hit the like button, and if you are able, uh, please do hit us with a super chat. Love your talk on liberation theology last night. Thank you so much, and you're gonna be hearing more about that the questions of, for lack of a better word, consciousness are central. That's the duality. Deep material political politics and questions of consciousness that can actually help facilitate a truly more evolving, compassionate, and deeply human culture. The antithesis of the social media culture. Cornell West talking about wisdom in contrast to the smartphone. That's the direction that we need to go in. And I know that liberation theology uh, is a part of that profoundly important picture. Um, what I was going to say was that, you know what? I actually completely lost, <laughs> I just completely lost my thread. I apologize. I will say um, in the thumbnail, even though I'm not giving uh, book recommendations, I'll always raise up a book. Uh, I'm reading this right now, Claim No Easy Victories on Cabral. Cabral, amazing leader. Burkina Faso, revolutionary. Please read up on him. And Bill Fletcher Jr. is going to be the guest on next week's TMBS, which I'm very much looking forward to. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, that that's, um, you know, I, I, I think one of the other paradoxes and one of the reasons that I want to bring into the, the for lack of a better word, spiritual dimension, is I also think that a lot of the questions, like if we take structural and political questions and turn them into discourses on privilege or personal responsibility, let alone you know all of the other toxicities around that, then we've lost politics and we've generated um, new really unhealthy social practices. Really, really destructive, antithetical to solidarity social practices. Watch uh, Ben Fong, Matt Chrisman, and Amber uh, Lee Frost have a great conversation on this on Jacobin. Now, conversely, the real things that we're pointing to um, in those discourses, right, in terms of dealing with like inner toxicities that are like social and political remnants in some respects, or things that we've been conditioned into socially, or things that are arise from psychological shame or trauma or any of these things, right? There's real work to be done. And a lot of that work is in the realm of psychological, spiritual, with a political context. You know, I could say in my own experience, like working through my own, say like, you know, like, you know, my own stuff um, in all of those regards. And we all have plenty of stuff. Um, is is has been more powerfully influenced by doing actual introspective work. I hope that makes sense. Imagining a world in which TMBS is the reach and impact of those shows with vague, far inferior analysis. Let's make that world. 
I don't know what shows you're throwing shade on. Do you feel Black Lives Matter can go a step above when it comes to dealing with other issues such as the wealth gap or lack of health insurance? Well, um, first of all, uh, my, my beard care is, is really simple. You, you wash it uh, thoroughly and then you put a little bit of almond oil in it. <laughs> I want some real hippie shit. Uh, no, I think Black Lives Matter can. I think Black Lives Matter manifests in a variety of different ways. And we're already seeing it in terms of like, as Ronan Burton Shaw said last night, you know, what, what is all of the conversations now about like TV programming or Gone with the Wind has nothing to do with the urgent material demands that are being made on the ground. So look, I think in general, you know, I think that's very clearly. Does, does politics pivot in a neoliberal symbolic direction? Does it pivot in an individualized, uh, obsessive and policing, uh, you know, of individuals direction? Or does it go to the material base around the crisis that's being identified? In this case, police viciousness, brutality, white supremacy, and violence in policing. Um, let's see. Uh, how do you think we should be looking at the culture war going forward? What fights are worth having and what's not having? I always make the simple distinction. I have no interest in the culture war as mostly understood. Um, substantive liberal rights flowing from, say, the 60s revolution. Every single human being in a legal and civic sense needs to have full rights. And then everybody needs full economic democracy and care. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of, you know, at times, in, you know, culture war is too broad of a term. Sometimes culture war um, is a major distraction from achieving those other two goals. And so that, that's, that's, you know, the very, very dangerous paradox of it. I'd also, I recommend, uh, Cedric Johnson has a great piece in Jacobin on, so, on um, the, the sort of branding neoliberal uh, distortion and weaponization of Black Lives Matter that everybody should read. People should always read Cedric Johnson, just like Adolph Reed. Um, folks, I'll say one more time, please do make sure to hit the like button. Doug Lane's take on Nathan J. Robinson's take on Matt Taibbi was really good and everyone should check it out. I haven't seen that one yet, but Doug Lane is brilliant and generally should be watched. Uh, ben Burgess also wrote a great piece on that, which you can read if you subscribe to his Patreon page. Very, very very, very measured, very thoughtful stuff. Um, so uh, thank you so much, Scarlett. I am so honored and appreciate that so much and sending love back. Uh, folks, I really, really appreciate all of you. Thank you for uh, its divisive logic, but despite Biden being a cruel joke, we must ensure he wins. Uh, electorally solidarity with Democratic voters. I agree. I'm, I'm all for strategic voting, and I think it's very important that Donald Trump is out of office. And in fact, I do think Joe Biden will win. Folks, I appreciate all of you so immensely. Um, and I can always just, you know, promise to keep trying to do my best and uh, get better in all ways. And... Um, and have that process uh, with everybody. Uh, I agree that politics of personal righteousness in a book like Right Fragility is problematic, but doesn't unconscious by it contribute to systemic racism? To what extent is this kind of self-critique important? Well, I, of course, I, as I just said, I think there's obviously a place uh, for trainings like that in different contexts. The thing too, though, that's, that's important. And of course it plays a role. And of course, you know, and again, if you've, if you've been, you know, if you have an antenna, you know, like if you have any kind of why, although the very interesting research that I've seen is that on the sort of personal level, it's very helpful if you've actually had, as an example, a boss who's a person of color or you're in like genuine friendships. Um, I think the other thing that I think is interesting about this is I think like, you know, like the Central Park lady, I bet she would be a master of those kinds of discourses and test taking. Like, there's this distinction between discursing and internalizing uh, that we also run up into. And I, again, am just generally going to go on the side of, 
let's not worry about perfecting the individual. Let's worry about the structure. But obviously, anti-bias training in, in, in employment context is important. But, and, and I would still pick one much better than that fragility book. I mean, that has, that, that is a freakish text. Do you think an org like the Irish Citizens Army should be adopted to defend union protesters, not armed resistance, but armed dissidents? I need to read more about that. That's interesting. Strategy for getting Bass as foreign uh, chair. I'll be t uh, tweeting more about that. Taking on a Republican on Medicare for all it would be awesome to have a, a Swearingen Booker dynamic duo. Yes, Paul James Swearingen is a great candidate too. Um, and I would also say that, um, yeah, I, I haven't read, I mean, I did not at all agree with Robinson's critique of Taibbi. Uh, I agreed a lot of with Taibbi's piece, certainly not all of it. Um, but I, but at any rate, um, guys, I think I've, I've had a long one, so I am going to wrap up as I always say, just nothing but appreciation for all of you. I'll keep working, keep doing my best. Uh, this Sunday, there's going to be a really good conversation with Joanna Viest, read her piece in the nation. Then the next week, Brianna last next week, the guest will be Bill Fletcher Jr. Everybody. Thank you so much for your support in every way, shape, and form. Stay safe, stay strong. Much love to all of you.